Greetings in the name of the Most High. Psalm 73, Communion. Psalm 73 is a message, it's a prophetic word received in the form of a psalm that was already there. Uh, it speaks to us through the age, but it's specifically for now. Let's, let's get into it. Truly God is to Israel, even to such as are of a clean heart. But as for me, my feet were almost gone, my steps had well nigh slipped. For I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. For there are no bands in their death, but their strength is firm. They are not in trouble as other men, neither are they plagued like other men. Therefore pride compassed them about as a chain, violence covereth them as a garment. Their eyes stand out with fatness, they have more than a heart could wish. They are corrupt and speak wickedly concerning oppression, they speak loftily. They set their mouth against the heavens, and their tongue walketh through the earth. Therefore his people return hither, and waters are of a full cup are wrung out to them. His people return hither. But this is, this is a message to the leaders of the world, to the um, elite globalists, whatever you want to call them. But this is the word that was given. But it's also a word for us, and here's the word for you. And this is why we're going to have a, a communion now. So prepare yourselves. Clear your minds, clear your thoughts, that we, we, I just really am, am, am reminded that the Lord is the rain giver and the lamb is the rain. And this is the time of the latter rain right now. The Lord gave me the, the word, I am the rain giver. I am the rain, and the rain is here, and it means a new form of consciousness. It means the rain is identified as, I make all things new. So, communion, you are to make new, because this is how you are. For I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. It's not just to admonish you, don't be envious of those who are prospering because through their wickedness, because God will deal with them eventually, just keep on your own, you know, all that kind of talk, that consciousness, it's a consciousness, that consciousness is now revealed that for the latter rain, this is wiped out. Next, for there are no bands in their death, their strength is firm. I mean, I'm really upset. They seem to live a long time and do all kinds of wickedly, run, gun, murder, lie, cheat, steal, you name it, all under the banner of Satan, hidden, of course, so they look like good people, you know, and uh, they play the game and they win, and they seem to have a nice, pleasant death after 80 or 90 years old, and uh, gosh, that's just no fair, Lord. Don't they reap what they sow? They seem to even die pleasurably. Have we been wrong the whole time? Are we on the wrong side? And the answer, of course, is no, because nothing of corruption, good cannot come from corruption. Anyway, this is the end of this. Therefore, pride compassed them about as a chain. Violence covereth them as a garment. Well, yes, violence is, is their way. You, you know, and, and you're not even including all the ones who have mysterious accidents, who just seem to get bumped off, who have the most bizarre, you know, look at the celebrities, if you will. You see all kinds of bizarre anomalies. I, I was used to that growing up in Hollywood and stuff, that, you know, seeing, you know, people just disappear, and you ask your parents about it, and they say, oh, I don't know, you know? Like whistling by the graveyard, like, hope it doesn't get me, you know, because what goes around comes around. So you don't see that part of it. But so it's a chain. Their eyes stand out with fatness. They're arrogant. Okay? They have more than a heart could wish. They have more than heart could wish. 
Uh, right. They have more material things than they could even wish for if they wanted to start wishing. You know. Um, and you, good little people, who are not slaves, but we are just we little people, we're invisible. We have no business thinking these thoughts. But no matter how many times we tell ourselves to not think those thoughts and to not worry, as Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mount, the main point of the whole thing was, you know, all glory to God and no worries. You have the gospel of peace. You have the gospel of, of wealth. You here are agreed to be here as a, a person stripped of any kind of status, you know, whatever you had financially, let's say, is come and gone, probably, you know, more so than with the wicked that seem to have their bank accounts expanding or, you know, you've made it all about money all your life and that just isn't us. It just, it, that just, you know what, I expect that kind of thinking from the, 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 just the common everyday man out there to be running the race to get up the ladder, as we talked about. And of course, you know, the race, as in Pig Floyd's Dark Side of the Moon, is, is basically a race under the auspices of the devil, which tends the, 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 the term Dark Side of the Moon or the occult. Um, you know, the, in, in, in circles the globe, and it, those are the rules by which you need to figure it out. But as they said, the starting gun uh, fired, and you didn't get it. And 10 years later, you're starting to run the race, but all these other people have been running since they were children. How are you going to catch up? Run, rabbit, run. Remember that in the, in the uh, album about the occult called Dark Side of the Moon? which was very specifically about very specific things, which is why I like it. I don't like it like I'm going to go with it. You can fire the starting gun all you want. I'm just going to laugh at you. I'm going to laugh my ass off at you. Run, run, run. Go work for a living. Go ahead. Go ahead. As they say in New Yorkese. Um, oh, boy, you're successful. Wow, that's cool. Glad that's working for you. Or you're not successful. Oh, you're a loser. Hey, look, you're a lamb. You're with God. Inferring, if they call you a loser, then you see they are calling the Father God, creator of all things, a loser. Unless, of course, they're running the race while having their Christian mask on. Am I being very clear? Am I being, there are people out there who have to fudge it and be friends with New Agers and Christians and atheists and this and that and want to be a, somebody to everybody. But in this life, nobody is really like, like that deep down. When they finally take their mask off, they'll start, you know, they'll show their prejudices, you know, and uh, the, the slurs will come out, and whether they're racial or about sexual orientation or whatever it is, all that stuff comes out as soon as they're off camera. Right, Alec Baldwin? <laughs> in, case, in your case, uh, it was, I guess you were drunk when you tweeted out about your uh, gay thing or whatever it is. So... This is communion because I'm here to give you a word, and that is, that is, that this is the latter rain. The father is the rain giver, and the lamb is the rain, and the rain is a change in consciousness. It's I make the rain being poured on with the rain. You know, rain on me, Lord. Rain, rain, rain. I like to get soaked by the rain because the rain is the birth of a new consciousness called the latter rain or meat in due season. Prophesied in 
the Old Testament. It is the return of Elijah. It is the coming of Jesus soon. It's also the persecution of the saints. And it is the unfolding of the mystery of the book of Revelation, kind of like all at once. You don't really exist here. You think you do. But with this latter rain, your consciousness expands and um, things like this happen. I just have to start riffing now. I, I'm kind of... It just remember, keep in mind in the backdrop that this is all about Holy Communion. The Holy Communion will be the launch, kind of, in a way, if you like, of the latter rain. I'm here to announce it to the whole world. It doesn't matter if, you know, I don't know, 100,000 people hear it from the Zeph report, let's say. Um, it doesn't matter. It, it, I read things all the time, not attributed to me, that I said years ago, and I'll see them all out there all over the various sites. You see, it's just, you put the drop in the water and the ripples go all the way to the shore. You just have to not have an ego about it, right? You've got to not have an ego about it. Um, why do you have to have, not have an ego about it? Because if you have an ego about anything like, in, uh, you know, if... You do your art, you do your thing in order to please the Lord because it, it's pleasing and share with friends because it's pleasing to them, theoretically. It may not be. Not everybody is, you know, okay. A day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness, as in the morning spread upon the mountains, the great People and a strong, there have not been ever like, neither shall be any more after it, even in the years of many generations. Now listen. A fire devoureth before them, and behind them a flame burneth. The land is as the garden of Eden before them, and behind them a desolate wilderness, yea, and nothing shall escape them. The appearance of them is as the appearance of horses, and as horsemen so shall they run, like the noise of chariots. We're going to get to that in a second. Like the noise of chariots on the top of the mountains shall they leap, and the noise of a flame of the fire that devoureth the stubble as a strong people set in battle array. That's you. I know it's Joel's army, but that, that, that's you. That's now. Before their face, the people shall be much pained. All faces shall gather blackness. They shall run like mighty men and shall climb the wall like men of war. They shall march every one on his ways and they shall not break their ranks. In other words, that's you potentiated. You change. Neither shall one thrust another. They shall walk every one in his path. And when they shall fall upon the sword, they shall not be wounded. That's extremely important. The earth shall quake before them, the heavens shall tremble, the sun and the moon shall be dark, and the stars shall withdraw their shining. This is the transformation, change, and the birth of consciousness. This is the third tier of consciousness. The first is, say, like animal consciousness. The second is self-reflective consciousness that got corrupted in the Garden of Eden, which was the cosmogony of consciousness or the creation of consciousness of human and then there's the third consciousness. The um, New Agers will call that the third eye, but really what it is is, um, and they keep thinking it's the pineal gland that's going to stick out like an eye, and it's, well, whatever. They can have their thoughts. But really, yes, there is a third consciousness. The third consciousness is the awareness of self as a multidimensional reality, like similar to angel consciousness. Thus, there is no back and forth. There is no time. There really isn't any space the way that you perceived it. There is no history of you. You are a new being right now. But that new being is what you always were, but were blocked from. This is the latter rain unlocking, you know. The door is Jesus. The latter rain unlocks the door 
to another world, which is basically the world. So it's kind of hard to talk about it because it's we're dealing with time space. We're dealing with um, there's canceling time and space, and you know all things new and all things already written, and yet free will, and yet you know um, in a in a timeless situation there is no free will because it's all now, right? It's all decided. They shall run to to and fro in the city. They shall run up upon the wall. They shall climb up upon the houses. They shall enter at the windows like a thief, and the Lord shall utter his voice before his army, for his camp is very great, for he is strong that executeth his word. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible, and who can abide it? And the answer is no one can abide it. You're either on his side or you're crushed. There is no abiding it. There is no writing it out. Therefore also now, saith the Lord, turn you even to me with your heart, with your fasting, with weeping, and with mourning, and rend your heart and not your garments, and turn unto the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness, and repenteth him of the evil. So that's the, like, the communion is, is symbolic then of um, your heart and fasting and weeping and mourning, because our fast, our Sabbath, our... All in all, our cure, our elixir, our I make all things new, our latter rain is Jesus Christ. He is all those things, and the people don't understand that. He is the creator, people don't understand that. There's a guy that told me that Lao Tzu said all those wise things that Lao Tzu said that you know, became Taoism, that Lao Tzu said you know, in China 500 years before Jesus. And my answer to him is, and Jesus, being the creator, created Lao Tzu. So that's a good creation on Jesus' part. And he got so mad. So mad. That there was an answer to that. Isn't it great that Jesus created Buddha because they needed to have ethics in, in, in the East and, and Buddha was the way to ethics? Isn't it amazing how the Illuminati... Hence the old brotherhood, hence the old um, uh, warlocks and whatnot invented religion to control man, but God laughs at them. So the birth of the new consciousness, meaning you just let all this go. Remember we started in Psalm 73, which is envy and Psalm 37, which is the opposite of 73, is the same thing. Don't worry about the wicked prospering in their way. Is what it, it's a constantly recurring theme. Lord, and how many times have you said this to the Lord? How come they get away with it and I don't? How come they're getting ahead and I'm working real hard here and they get fame and fortune and I don't? How come they get a raise and I don't? How come, uh, you know, I've had so many problems and people look at me like like Job and pointing their finger saying I'm a fool and the Lord says no they are pointing at me saying I am a fool when they say you were a fool for your faith in me i.e. because that's the reason you're not getting anywhere that's the reason you're a loser then they're pointing the finger at me says Yahweh Elohim God well I am Elohim too I'm a son of God. So that's a plural thing. So that, but that, that speaks to the new consciousness because through your faith in Jesus Christ, you're made sons and daughters of the Most High God. You are basically that. Not reserved to the status of angels. So that new consciousness, that new consciousness is otherworldly. It's not part of this world. Yet your effect on this world is immediate. Intercessory, prayer, whatever. There's no... You're like a thief. You come in and you just move them to Jesus Christ. There is no debate. You're the army of the Lord, but the army is, cannot be an army based on the way you are right now, the way I am. Can we be an army, a cohesive army? Absolutely not. There would have to be a great change, would there not, for me to be a prophetic army, for me to be able to be intercessory and just on this thing 
24-7. It's a different consciousness. It's a different ball game. It's a different reality. It would have to be changed on every level, outside, inside, up and down, time and space. Everything is the latter rain. Everything. Including rewire of my desire. Everything. Let the community be the kickoff. You, you, fasting and so forth will naturally be done and weeping, but not weeping like you've been. You've been already weeping half your life, haven't you? You've been crying most of the time because you're a lamb, so you've been crying most of the time. We all have. Because they're mean. They're rotten. They're cruel. They look for people like you to pick on. In Egypt, they're back in the Nero, Nero territory. They're basically lighting Christians on fire and using them for, you know, they're you know, putting them in the public square. You know? Uh, and this administration of your country, whatever country, I mean, I have, the country's become so abstract to me, I don't see countries anymore. Big changes have happened over the last year since voting in the election and seeing the folly of that. I will not repent for evolution, for progression, and neither should you. In other words, if I had held a view before that the changed over time and, it's, and the Lord's changing it, I have no need to repent of that. You say, well, you used to say this. It's like, so? They used to be down on these people, so? It's, I have been an honest dealer. I've earnestly and honestly worked it out over time, so you have to see my progression. People say, well, you need to repent. You need to, you know, you were down on this person. You need to write them a letter or whatever. It's like, no, I don't. Absolutely not. As I change, I reflect that change. And um, I think in this case, we were talking about uh, one Alex Jones. I, I used to kind of rail on him as a fear monger, but he was, it was really the whole new age thing. And that's where I was at at the time. And now I see him being led by God more and not by, you know, I've seen a change in him. And then I've also, uh, you know, been appreciative of his efforts in terms of trying to keep the American population from going into slavery absolutely you know whatever kind of differences there were but that's where I began you throw any new age stuff at me and David Icke and all that I'm I'm immediately on that I'm not going to accept that so never apologize for that we we grow apart we grow together we have differences we come back together we we you know Continue along, and this is not set in stone either, what's happening right now. It's a fluid process. But anyway, so now we're at this, at this part of, uh, of embarking and, and leaving. At this point, what's very important to understand is... Um, the things yesterday are not the same, the, the values, you know, and including all the, the shows that I've done are kind of like, there's a progression there of, you know, learning and being in my flesh and then overcoming that flesh, becoming more wise about things, people and discernment, getting sharper over time, you know, and... Um, and then being brought up short, and you know that that whole kind of struggle, that's kind of oh, that that form of kind of scratching around to learn and get a little further, then resort back to the flesh, engage in jealousy, anger, petty differences, squabbling, you know, backbiting, murmuring, whatever else, gossiping, and then repenting, and then trying to get better, and then not getting better, and then. Every minute of the day, you keep wanting to fall back into those patterns and do, especially after a couple of drinks or whatever, right? The tongue gets real regrettably loose. The tongue is a vicious weapon. And so, you know, we're all just kind of mad at ourselves for not being better people. 
But at the same time, you don't belong to the world because, well, they've obviously rejected you for whatever reason, you know, or you rejected them or it was mutual or some, somehow there was no connection made there. Because as A.W. Tozer said, look, the world, I need a big sermon on this, the world has its own language and people of the world understand that language automatically as children and heed. If you belong to God, you'll never understand that language they speak, so you won't heed. And it's just that simple. It's a dividing of the sheep and the goats. Nothing to apologize for. They point their finger at you and say you're a loser. They're not pointing their finger at you. They're pointing their finger at, quote, unquote, impotent God. God's the loser. Look at his children in rags on the earth and failures. And look at us. Look at us. We're ruling everything. We're rock stars. We're prime ministers. We're Nobel laureate scientists. We're all those things. And look, they're not. Obviously, we know the way to go. Obviously, there's a way to go. And I'm here to tell you, (laughs) there is no choice, you stupid idiot. There is no choice. You are made the way you're made. It's predetermined what you will choose, though you will choose. You were made like that so you couldn't hear their language and heed. Now they laugh at you, and they kick you, and they try to, to, to lecture you. Oh my God, imagine that. They want to teach you something. They'll hurt you so they can teach you. See, now you learn that if you don't want to be hurt like that, you'll heed. Oh, he just doesn't get it because he can't hear. Nor can he see. Nor can he speak. He's like Tommy in the Tommy the Who thing. which is symbolic, of course. Well, you knew that, obviously. Of course you did. It's an allegory. Uh, that, look, if you failed English 101 and had a lousy education, the Bible could be your entire university. Just read it, and you'll be re-educated. <laughs> This division is about to go through a transformation. This is why we have communion. It's very important. And you've never had a prelim to a communion like this, I know. It's 100% prophetic, it's 100% outrageous. Because I'm saying nothing less than the this is the total game changer, what God's doing right now. Why he got me up again, I don't even want to say. What the Lord is doing right now, and you are a part of it. It's a, it's a, you know, at the very least, you wake up thinking, hmm, something happened to me. Remember the Rolling Stones song about satanic initiation? It was in 1965, I think. Six? Six, seven, maybe. The lyric went like this. This is part of my ministry, ministering to um, aging rock stars. No, seriously. I, you know, it, it's, it's a music vibe, so they feel a connection, even though they can't stand me half the time. Then they love me, then they hate me, then they love me. And then I'm here to tell them, well, it doesn't really matter what you think of me anyway. <laughs> song goes something happened to me yesterday something I can't speak of right away something happened to me something oh so groovy something happened to me yesterday and uh, you can I'm sure they've got that song on YouTube or whatever. I mean there's dozens and dozens and tons of those kind of songs but uh, there was a change 
See, and you've, your whole life you've seen them go through that change and then they got the goodies and the pudding and they, you know, it's all based on wickedness and look, look at how they prosper. Lord, look at how they don't die. Look at how in old age they have all the grandchildren. We're all disconnected and dysfunctional. And they had, we're just, look at the, look at that. Well, look at your children, Lord, in rags and, and disconnected and called losers and disrespected and to where people don't even want to own up to it. They're going, oh, I'm not, I'm not really with Jesus. Are you kidding? I, don't, I want to be cool, man. I don't, I don't know this Jesus guy. Do you? <laughs> I don't want to be around Jesus. I'm, no, I'm not a Jesus. <laughs> I don't want to be like beheaded by Muslims. I'm not with Jesus, you know. I don't want to be like, like now. It's like, I'm not with Jesus. I'm not homophobic, right? They've got the whole connection that if you are with Jesus, you're a homophobe and therefore a pariah socially. You need to be executed so that society can prove it's not homophobic. <laughs> Take my laughter as a sign of joy to come in your heart. Now, I'm here to tell you that no, you, it's, you know, it's not, no, that part in Joel, it's not that you turn away and get back in sackcloth and ash the way you were with the head you had, with the heart you had, with the thoughts you had. I'm wailing and moaning. It's, that's not the point of this. What I'm here to say is this thing that, like on that song lyric I just said, that happened there on that side, right? That, that's really what you want to talk about, isn't it? That ever, your whole life you've seen them getting ahead and being cool and all that. And they just never seem to falter or never lose a step. It's the most amazing thing. Obviously proving that God is the loser and that the way of the world is the winner and the obvious way to go versus being some kind of a fool. And it's ubiquitous across the board and it's, it's consistent on a daily basis. I mean, what kind of idiot would you have to be to miss that? How could you miss that? A.W. Tozer, when the world speaks, the lambs of God do not understand. It's just that simple. You couldn't have changed this outcome, in other words, no matter what you did. I used to pray to be a Satanist, because then I'd be cool, you know what I mean? Since everyone was around me, I was brought up by Satanists, I wanted to be a one-two. I wanted to be, I didn't want to be in the zoo, I didn't want to be under the auspices of shrinks or drugs or locked up. or I didn't want any trouble. I wanted to be liked and successful and happy and run around the treadmill and stuff, you know, thinking it's some, some kind of life. I wanted all that. And I did. I wanted to please my mother. I wanted, you know, mother also is a, is a is representative of the world. Well, the world is mother, right? So... You know, the hand that rocks the cradle rules the earth. But that is slavery, of course. And anyway, the world has this other view that, no, you're being rebellious and evil. No, you're resisting the obvious and acting dumb when you really know what's going on. No, uh, of course you don't want to die or be hurt and lied about, and false witness born, and unlucky, spitting out pieces of your broken luck. You don't want to wind up like that. So you're obviously going to start feeding the dragon, so the dragon will feed you. Right? I mean, it's the obvious, it's the only choice. You're up against the wall, it's either do or die. God, they just don't get it, do they? I'm acting like someone in the world. They just don't get it. We put the water right there before the horse and he won't drink. I mean, we can't do it for him. We can't tell him what it is. And then those that do have this, ooh, something happened to me. Wow, everything's different. Everything's new. Wow, it's, wow, I can see colors in a different way. And everything is just, you know, it's really amazing. Yes, that's the, the counterfeit third way. See, the counterfeit way meaning consciousness in this case. 
See, that's what happens. That, and look, I'm just going a little further than the Bible to I'm going deeper into the meaning of those verses in Psalm 73 because that's what you're really envious about. That mother accepts them, mother doesn't accept you. Mother accepts Cain, mother does not accept Abel. Father accepts Abel, father doesn't accept Cain. Ooh. Wow. It's just like that. You can't, you don't, and you, you were made the way you were made. You were meant to be exactly as you are in your history. There's nothing to be ashamed of. All the mistakes you've made are just learning. There, there are things that poke at you so that you become a certain thing that Papa wants you to be. And our father is also our mother. And our father is also our brother, meaning a brother is also a, a metaphor for family and friends. So all is contained. So you're here kind of like in a spacesuit, or as Ian Anderson penned in Jethro Tull, with an aqua lung, meaning that you're not breathing their air, you've got your own tank. And people like that wind up being very unlucky indeed. Have you ever wondered why the collectivists and the statists want to round up all the preppers and make it illegal for you to store extra food items and have preparations on hand? They're now making that illegal? Because, see, that's not the lizard way, is it? They're like share and share alike, right? They're, they're collectivists. They're a hive. That kind of thing is evil to them. So is homeschooling. Anything that would honor the individual, individual classes, an individual path. A loner is now a terrorist. If someone's preferring to be alone and walk their own path or a lonely walk in the Lord or whatever it is, that's, that's a terrorist. You have to prove that you are um, meldable within the hive norm meaning you're, you're going to play. Nobody gets into the New World Order without a Luciferic initiation and then participate. What was not said by Spangler in that comment was, uh, it, it was in the CFR manual, Foreign Affairs, I think, uh, from 1970-something, David Spangler. Uh, but what he didn't say was, meaning that once initiated participation, so I give, you give, we all have ranks, names, serial numbers, we all obey these. This what Clinton calls the third way. This is the third way. Because once we're all connected like that, we have peace. We have rock stars. Uh, you know, for, I don't want to insult this guy because he's a really great musician. His name is Devin Townsend. And uh, he's a metal guy, but he's just really brilliant, you know, really... Uh, just like composers of old kind of brilliance, you know. He's almost like <laughs> the metal version of someone like Bach or Beethoven or something. But anyway, um, no, not that he's that progressive or anything. He just has a vibe, you know, just a competence. Uh, we had a song called Victory. And in that song, he envisions a world connected and overcome the dark, you know, everyone connected. In, in, a, in this sort of hive thing, and that would be a victory because they believe that in that victory there is peace. No more struggle, no more war. Once everybody is conquered, all that individualism, all that Jesus Christ separation stuff, then there'll be a victory. And that's what the, the meaning is. And uh, no, I'm not faulting. I, like, I just told you what I thought about his music. I don't mind if someone writes that if they believe that, they can still be my friend. I, I, I thoroughly disagree. I'm just going to tell you the truth on this. You know, right now, just so we don't have any confusion, there never will be a world like that was described, and let me give you the physics of it. The reason there will not be a world like that is because if that's all there was on the earth, i.e., those people that hear that language, they, they think it's free will choice. They don't understand. They don't understand what free will is. So they think you're being a rebel by not... You're pretending you didn't hear. You're doing it on purpose. Therefore, we're going to punish you. They don't understand that you really didn't hear and you're really being punished for no good reason. The innocent being slaughtered because you're still innocent. 
but you were made to be that way because Jesus separated you from the herd for himself, Jesus meaning God. Now, let me give you the exact mathematical analysis. If, number-wise, there were that many people that were connected and that was it, you know, and that they had that victory, there would be no world, there would be no earth, there would, be, there would not be, quote, this, unquote, whatever you think your reality is, earth, sky, house, water, whatever. There would be no this in the first place. It would be as if it never was because there would be no purpose for creator in that. What they envision as victory is a world without creator. Hence, now they're going for the singularity or man merging with machine. Okay? Which is death, by the way. There, is, there would be no world ever like Mr. Townsend envisions. And I know that a lot of these guys, you know, they're very earnest in their thought. They really do believe they would have world peace. They do believe it would be a better world if everyone cooperated because that's, it's like speaking English. The dominant culture is Satan, but if no one calls him that, then we don't have to have that kind of lousy thing wheeled out. We can all just be friends. I'm here to tell you there will never be a world like that. There will never be a utopia, there will never be a new Atlantis, and there never will be a new world order ever on this planet. Ever. There will never be a world like Gattaca. Was it Gattaca or one of these futuristic movies where everything is kind of genetically made? There will never be a world like that or Animal Farm. And uh, there may be a world like 1984, and there already is. It's beyond that right now. But there will never be, and they, the, what they want to do, the reason for the surveillance, is because they want to see inside every person's soul. Or they wouldn't put devices in your washing machines and things. They want, they want to get inside and find out what side you're on. Because their job is to make sure it's one world connected. Meaning we have to get rid of any of these that just for whatever reason didn't light up. Got me? And all this is prelude. All this is prelude. To, this is all prophetic. Nobody's going to tell you this stuff unless God's teaching it through, speaking through them, because this is too complicated to figure out at, at, on your own. You'd have to admit that at this point. That's why this word today is important. They're not all like this. Now, And you shall know that I am, the, in the midst, I am in the midst of Israel and that I am the Lord your God and none else, and my people shall never be ashamed. Now, we've got to unlock this now, okay? And it shall come at, to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy, and, and your old men will dream dreams, your young men will see visions, and also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days I will pour out my spirit, and I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. And then it goes into the day of judgment and the day of the Lord, in which you are light, in which this birth of consciousness is the same issue, the same thing they got when they got their third, the third awakening, the third way, the opening of the eyes, the satanic initiation, the um, keys to the world, the leave your soul at the door. So the, and and in, all, in all those cases, the, the, the more you reject creator is the higher you go in that system, obviously, which is a collectivist system. And, uh, uh, you know, and in that, when people are, you know, your throat, my arm, you're, you're singing, my this, my that, we all meld together, take each other's, it's like one big library. I take your talent, you take my talent, we all just... Then it really becomes a dog-eat-dog -dog thing. It, it ends up back the same old thing. They run each other through. They kill each other. You know, the whole thing goes down the tube. It's all just a fabrication. It's all a lie. But they do feel like they've just had a big awakening and they're kind of nodding, winking at other people who are also, yeah, you too, uh-huh. And they have this whole thing that opens up to them. It's a different consciousness. 
They're not the same people they were just a moment ago. Okay? The world's enjoyed that all these thousands of years. They've, they've had it over on you. Right? They were like Nimrod, becoming as, through their self-corruption, becoming as a mighty man on the earth. Right? Powerful. Able to lead their own lives and pay their bills. You know, and have a good sense of style and be desired among people. And, you know, it was a lot different back in the old days. I was just a loser. But now look at me. I'm, I'm rehabilitated. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay. I think I made the point uh, beyond the point. Sorry. And uh, through all my digressions, I made the point. But this is communion day. The point is, like, the, that's the counterfeit. Because it doesn't last long. Ask any of them. They have to go keep going back and doing it again and again and again and again to try to get up that ladder. It doesn't work. It becomes competitive. People hate each other. They gossip about it. They have the world today. Is my example of why it doesn't work. Why there never will be a utopia. Just look at the world today. These people are in charge. This is their world. It's not my world. It's not my war in Egypt. It's not my situation here at all. You know, when Jesus separated me from this, that was it. If he told me to vote for somebody or other, that's fine, I will. I'm going to vote against abortion and things. I've just talked to too many women that never really got over it. They just still feel like murderers. So I'm like, eh, why don't they tell people that? Because there's another agenda. None of their stuff works, folks. But there is that awakening that I I told you about, without which they will clam up around you. You ever get the feeling that there's a... They're all talking about you secretly in the room. They all know something that you don't. That they still do that. They still do that. And they will still do that. And then they try to give... You know, they try to see if there's any wiggle room that if you can become one of them or whatever. And it's like, you sure you can become one of them, I suppose, if you have free will to do it. And you want to become um, a reprobate or you want to become, you want to reject God, meaning you won't have that supply anymore. Then you're just going to have to fight it out on your own. I, uh, the choice to me is obvious. But it was already made for me before I even knew there was a choice. I just was, I, what I've learned about my own life, you compare the notes, but it's that there never was a choice. God made us the way he made us, some for here, some for there, you know. Everything, there's a season, and for everything, there's a different person. And every once in a while, a person comes along, and they make their contribution to life. And in my humble opinion, you can't speak the word of God if you have a foot in the world, if you have a hand in the game. You, whatever you say about God is just like book learning and you, they recite verses and they try to browbeat other people with it, but they don't walk with God. They don't walk with God. And yeah, secular radio talk show host, no matter how much they talk about God, they're not fit to be prophetic voices. You know, God did not separate them out for that purpose. They're fulfilling their purpose. But they're not, if they suddenly decided to start speaking the oracles of God, I would turn away. I know that, just like the world knows this, that to speak the oracles of God, the prophetic word of God, that God will only use his vessels that are not having a hand in the game. I mean, you can, you can sin, I suppose. You could be a pervert or a thief or something and even a murderer, but God could speak through you if you don't have a hand in the game. Do you end? <laughs> yeah, that's kind of hard for people to swallow. It's really true, though. It's, it's really the truth. Um, it's very rare in my life that I've been given a word that I heeded because I found corruption in it in most cases. I would think about it, you know, I would take it to heart and I would think about it and say, I wonder if they're right or, Lord, what do you think? And in every case, the Lord's rejected it. And then they go, oh, you're just being prideful. It's like, no, the Lord, I prayed on it, the Lord rejected it and screw you, you know. 
You ain't brethren. You were just trying to control or whatever your trip is. Go, go do your power trip on somebody else, somebody who gives a you-know-what. God, these people. Don't you get sick of that? You know, religionistas, don't you get sick of them? Oh, here's, here's a word. They, bro, here's a word from the Bible. The Lord gave this to me to give to you. Look, it says this. And then there's some really nasty kind of admonition. You know, it's like, and he's trying to act like he's not doing it himself, but it's coming from the book. Did that ever happen to you? Oh, my God. That, I just wanted to punch their face in. What a, what kind of a horrible reprobate piece of crap is that that would do that? And then they do it online. You know, like you'll say something and then they'll have big scripture quotes. Totally misunderstanding what you said. Just their opportunity to browbeat people. I just immediately defriend these people on my uh, Twitter. Or, well, Twitter, I don't care because I have so many followers on Twitter. I don't know. I've got like 30,000 followers or something. And everybody, no one's really following. They're just all, it's just, you know, it's built up over the years. You know, a lot of people in music and stuff. Yeah, they just want to hear my stuff so they can rip me off. Then they find they can't follow me. <laughs> it's, really, it's really hilarious. Um, but anyway, look, the point is, no, if, if, if God's giving you music, they can't follow it in the world. You know what I mean? And I've done plenty of messed up things. I mean, I'd, I tried to remix Beethoven and then I put a drum part in and the drum's really sloppy and it's just online. It's really embarrassing and I just have to live with that. Oh, well. We grow and change. So today is the latter rain. No, I don't want to make it a big holy kind of talk thing because, see, the problem with that is pretentiousness. Pretentiousness is what ruins the spirit. So does profanity, but there's a line there. There's a line there. We've got to keep the tone exactly the way it is right now to receive this. It will come to pass after that, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams, your young men see vision. In other words, your, this is not on all flesh. This is on his flesh. In other words, I know there's the word all there, but all doesn't mean, well, let's put it this way. Yes, uh, the, uh, the people that would receive his spirit being poured out would be his. The people that are of the world would not receive that. I don't care how you, if you tried to spoon feed it to them, that's what I mean. People misunderstand. They don't dig down. They don't interpret. I, you know, how are you going to get it if you, if you, you think that, oh, we're all in this together. We're all just one. And we all need to love each other, you know. Yes, thank you, Mr. Olstein. Boy, and that's the way to prosperity, too. Don't forget to say that. Um... Okay, now let me get to the point, and then we're going to have our communion. I know I'm jumping around in Joel too, but I have to. I can't do. I can't take it, you know, in a linear way because it's not. It's not going to. It's not going to give you the meaning. Fear not, O land, because be glad and rejoice, for the Lord will do great things. Be not afraid, you beasts of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness do spring. For the tree beareth her fruit, and the fig tree and the vine do yield her strength. Jesus. The lamb is the rain. Be glad then, you children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he hath given you the former rain moderately, right, when he was here and then afterward. And he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain, and the latter rain in the first month, and the floors shall be full of wheat, and the vats shall overflow with wine and oil, even though this is a day of darkness and a terrible day of the Lord. What's that mean? That the floors shall be full of wheat, and the vats shall be overflowing with wine and oil. What the heck does that mean? And people that are against wheat right now, God loves wheat, so don't reject wheat. Meet in due season, my friends. People nourish themselves with wheat and rice and different things. And meat was more like a celebration. Not, met, not needed to have it, all, you know, everything in balance. But, you know. And 
And I rest- will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten. The locust is, the locust is like the Obama administration or the or the globalist takeover or whatever that Alex Jones talks about or the or the whatever you know. Just that that are those are the locusts. But I will restore you the years that the locust has eaten. He's eaten years. The canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. You shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God that hath dealt wondrously with you, and my people shall never be ashamed. In other words, dealt, and that's it. That's the word. That's the word right there. It's unpacked. It's yours. It's mine. And with that, I say, friends, the bread of life is Jesus in the flesh, Jesus' teachings, and is the lamb, and the lamb is the rain. So I take this bread, and do you have yours? I'll give you a moment, or you can stop the tape. Um, but this is the spirit of communion, that we share a word, yes? And then we eat, we nourish, and then we eat something real, rather than some litany they do. So I'm eating this bread now, along with you. The bread, this is my body, said Jesus, but we are your body, Lord. This is the rain, the latter rain. This is the army of Joel, which is the army of God. This is the awakening of a different consciousness because what was explained there is a different people after the thing happens. So the bread represents the thing, and I take it now. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. I need that. Oh, Lord, in Jesus' name, I pray that you successfully awaken every single one that you have chosen. We don't choose you. You choose us. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Blessings to you, almighty God. Amen. I'm grateful. Now, I don't need anything, but if it's going to change, I'm, I'm grateful. I'm, uh, I'm now realizing that without being washed by the blood of the Lamb, without being washed in the blood, I am just seen as a despicable sinner, which I am, but I'm given... The breach is healed by Jesus' blood, representative of this glass of wine. This also represents our shared brotherhood and sisterhood, our communion with one another, because you know, in the end we are the Lamb. So I drink this sangre de Cristo in honor of the Lord, in honor of everything, and as a beginning of something marvelous. The wine, the blood is the rain. The rain of the latter day is more powerful by a magnitude of, I don't know, seven than the Holy Spirit awakening of the Holy Ghost uh, after Jesus' death that occurred to the apostles that changed them. You saw their cha- You saw Peter, especially. Peter was the most dramatic. How he changed after the Pentecost. He changed. They spoke in tongues. They spoke different languages. They understood each other. They had these gifts. They didn't understand where they came from. They knew all about themselves, the future, the past, everything. They could heal people by walking, just walking by them. By just thinking of them. Everywhere they went, they healed others. This was the early rain. And the latter rain is, like I said, a magnitude of seven times more powerful than that, which would be 700% greater. And that number that was just given to me by the Holy Ghost, just, the Spirit just put that in my Um, I I was looking for a number, and boom, that came in, so, you know, discern it. So if it's a magnitude of seven more, then you can just imagine. Right, the 
power of translation. The power of Enoch and Elijah. I mean, no less than that, friends. But, but not a power that you garner, not a self, that even your movements, you lose consciousness of them. There will be no consciousness of your moving, no consciousness of where money comes from or goes, no consciousness of the other people you used to be envious of because, I know, they would get away with murder, but there is no real murder. This is just a game show you're on. This is just all an illusion. The self-importance and the plaques on the wall and the awards in the, in, the, in the trophy room or whatever, these are all irrelevant. Nothing to be envious of. Yes, and they all sold out to get those trinkets. So what? It doesn't matter because in the end, that, none of this exists and that doesn't exist and none of that matters. The point is, you need to be changed so you won't it won't occur to you in the first place, so you don't have to repent if it doesn't occur. Because it keeps reoccurring. Sorrow and, yeah, weeping. You're, you're the first one to get the sackcloth and ash and go weeping in the road because you just want to see yourself as a victim. And uh, that's hard for you to admit, but, and me to admit, you know. And, but we do. There is a certain kind of pride in martyrdom. And that's, that's ridiculous. That is ridiculous. There should be no consciousness whatsoever about martyrdom. It's, if you are going to be a martyr for the Lord, that's some kind of gift. It's, that's, it's the only way you should look at it. it it's, there shouldn't be any like, oh, look what I'm doing for you, Jesus. I'm really sacrificing it all. You, what are you going to do for me? And people like that, just they cry for their whole life. I know, I know old men and old women who basically have cried their whole lives, you know, over the, they just couldn't get beyond that point. They couldn't get beyond that. See, that's like their consciousness needed to be changed. That was the early rain, you know, after the, after the early rain, what happened is the rain dried up and then it didn't rain again. You know, it didn't really rain again. Oh, there were moments here and there where they had you know, revivals and awakenings and different things, but they, they only last a short time and they go away. They last a short time and they go away. This is permanent because this is a consciousness change and a physics change of everything. And we're moving into this, and so you'll see amazing things. People will be prophesying out of thin air about all kinds of things that they could not know. Uh, gifts of other languages, gifts of... Um, musical interludes, whatever, knowledge of things you didn't have before. And then finally, those of you who are true to the Lord, the gift you'll get, the greatest gift, is to be relieved of the bondage and pain of thinking about other people. I don't know why this burden has been a thorn in our side so long that we see them getting away with something or prospering by, by working iniquity and things like that. And, you know, we get treated like Job on a daily basis. Oh, worse than Job. Job had it easy compared to you and me, right, and all the others. Job had it worse. No, you had it worse. You were never restored, you know, sevenfold or never, you know. It's just been degradation after degradation and, and then crying and crying and being a victim and being a martyr and just... You know, thinking the Lord owes you something, but then putting that thought out of your head because you don't want to be guilty of thinking that and just being a mess, huh? And being really angry at why to father's children suffer, being beheaded now, being disrespected in the Middle East and around the world. And uh, the Christian children were all burned in a, in a, in a school in Africa and Obama turns a blind eye to every bit of, every atrocity against any Christian. The media and Obama turn a blind eye on. They approve of it. They foment it. They're fostering it. They're encouraging it. They don't want Christians in the world. Nor do they want Jews. You Jewish people, you have to understand Christians and Jews were locked in, in this thing together. You know, we're locked into this together. I was just quoting from, 
you know, the Old Testament. We're locked into this together. So we better start getting along. Because there's... You right? No, I mean, I look. Well, you see, you don't get along with anybody. You could just be sarcastic. And, oh. Thank you, Lord, for the beautiful communion for this word. Because back to Psalm 73. Well, I could go to a revelation. Okay. And maybe I'll do that. Um, well, this is like the Bible teacher. Turn to Revelation 13.6. Okay, 13, 13, 9, 13, 6. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. Period. Let's go to the verse before. And they worshipped the dragon which gave power unto the beast and they worship the beast, saying, Who is like the beast, and who is able to make war with him? <laughs> Meaning, we're on the right side of this one. In order to have their powers, they must blaspheme God and blaspheme his name and his tabernacle, and them that dwell in heaven and them who are God's people on earth must be seen to be the losers and the fools. And also now the terrorists and whatever other label we can put on people to make them a pariah. All that are wanted on the earth are Satanists. Period. That's all that they, that that's all that's wanted. In other words, not wank Luciferian, you know, you know, I'm down, you're down, we're all down. Everybody on the same page, you know, the victory of Devin Townsend's song. That's that's all they're into. And if they gotta spill blood to get it, so be it. If they have to use those guillotines that they bought, I don't know, what is it, 60,000 of them or something in Georgia? and Bizarre, huh? That's a weird conspiracy theory, right? Like the FEMA coffins. Well, let's say they use those. Uh, it's it's going to be just like in the, you know, the Left Behind series books. It's going to be just like that. They're going to behead Christians, and they're going to try to preserve the bodies to put older heads on them because they have head transplants now to where they can put an old head on a young body. So a guillotine would be the way to do it and then get them on ice right away. You know, so instead of becoming a machine, you could be, you know, maybe get a reprieve with that. But whatever, they're, they're all involved in trying to beat death and live forever and kill 90% of the population on Earth. And, you know, it goes further than that. I mean, Christians don't feel especially uh, important because... In the end, they want control of the birth process of all people. And they don't want any free choice of anyone. They want everyone to be slaves. If you're not a willing slave, then you too, like the Christians, like the Jews, uh, you too will be seen as a pariah. And anyone that has any sense of individual liberty at all is a pariah. Not just religious people or spiritual people, but all people... That has to be beaten out of people, and that's why they have the teachers now to teach people we're all one. The kids belong to the state. All those kinds of teachings are, are designed to make people slaves. That's the only reason it's taught, is to make people into slaves. It takes a village. is about creating slaves, which these lizards can rule over, because that's all they understand. They're not creative types. They can't think. They just go by reaction and rote. Right? They're very much fear-based. They're a different consciousness. That's, we're in this consciousness, but this is not our consciousness. Did you see where the word today showed this great prosperity in the midst of the day of the Lord? Now, how does that work? They're not consecutive. They're together. Right. The wealth is like an allegory because when the consciousness change comes, you don't need anything. You really don't need food as you did. Or, and it doesn't matter if it's GMO or not. No, no poison, right, will hurt. No weapon formed against you will hurt you. You go kind of beyond all that. You're like a meta version of yourself. And these are people on the earth. Great signs and wonders the Lord will do 
unbelievable. And the world will call that powers of Satan. Further, there was a mention of chariots. Chariots are angels. The chariots are coming. That is, angels have ships. And when those ships arrive, and they're almost impossible to even comprehend physics-wise, even if you look at them. They're, they're hard to see because they're kind of floating in and out of various dimensions. But um, they will be called, and angels will be called demons. And demons will be called angels. And they're, all of them are going to arrive at about the same time. Um, you say, well, the UFOs, those are demons. No, they all have UFOs. Remember that film, The Knowing, with Nicolas Cage? I love that movie because it had these angels in it, and they were kind of, they're very otherworldly. That was pretty convincing, but the ship they had was just mind-boggling. You know, they did a good job trying to imagine the unimaginable. And, uh, yes, there are ships. So along with the signs and wonders, which will be the ships and the angels, and, the, and then you, it'll be hard to see them because they won't exactly be completely human, then they will be, then they won't be, then they'll be here, they'll be there. Whether they have a connection to a ship that's floating in space or not, people won't know. It's not going to be like broadcast on the evening news. It won't be picked up by the news media because they're scared to death of anything that's outside their train of thought. Anything that's outside their train of thought threatens them, they get frightened. So they're not going to, you know, publish anything because, or if they get a spin from somebody, they'll say, well, these ships are here, but we think they're evil. You'll know the good ones because they'll say they're evil, so you'll know they're good. You'll know they're evil when they say they're good. Cooperate with them. Then you'll know those are the bad guys. Because whatever the world says, it will be the opposite, will be true. All right? So you'll know and be prepared on that day. But on that day, you're communing with angels because you guys are going to be in the same consciousness as them. So therefore, uh, it's win-win. I mean, in that way, you have, you'll be able to see all the work the angels have done throughout your life to protect you, far from being a loser. And the other thing I want to mention, and then this is it, I've got to button this up, is that in the kingdom of God, you are royalty, okay? You're joint heirs with Christ, hence you are Christ, it's, it's a mystery at this point, but you are royalty. You are, there's nobody above you. you know, well, God Almighty, no, I mean, in, as a created being or whatever, there's, there's no one's going to tell you anything. You are ruling over the material realms. And um, here you are but a fool, but a little you know, disconnected, sort of full, but they actually have felt sorry for you over the years. Oh, boy, you know, we got to help out because they're like, you know, they're derelict and they're shell-shocked and they're just too sensitive and they just couldn't kind of get it and we have to help take care of them. I mean, there's actually been pity and charity on your behalf. Wow. So it's about time you got a little bit of uh, what's yours. No, this is not a Joel Osteen prosperity doctrine or Creflo dollar thing. This is basically the truth about what's happening. I'm only good, you know, in this kind of about talking about like just like what we're talking about. This is where this is where my gift comes through. And. Um, I don't know. I don't mind having a different consciousness and playing like a child. Did you hear how in the scriptures it's filled with joy? How the joy of this new consciousness, this latter rain, this, this real understanding, it's a real faith because it's just immediate. There is no subject-object relationship. It's just, I am faith. I am the meaning of faith. I have become faith. I am wouldn't that be nice for a change? Rather than a distant faith, I gotta get more pain. A distant gold, I just gotta get some of that gold. 
The distant piece of bread, I'm hungry. The distant this, the distant that, something just around the reach, out of reach, out of reach. They put it in my face, it's out of reach. And I don't want to be angry at other people for getting away with murder. Gosh, I better join them. No, I don't want to. I don't want to be cut off from my Lord. But Lord, please, destroy all those people, Lord, because they, they because it's bothering me. <laughs> you don't like being in that kind of mode of consciousness? I and mean, that's because you have no, you are a fool. I'm a fool. Living like that, being fools, being bothered by what the other guy is doing, we're being fools. Like you, you're royalty. You're here in the disguise and they, they even pity you, which is incomprehensible to us because we're like, pity me, oh my gosh, it's really more for me to pity you. But go ahead, pity me. sound confident. I hate that. Yep, well, I imagine you do. I imagine you really hate it. When we come down on the truth like a hammer on an anvil with pure force and sparks fly and it's solid as can be and the earth shakes and the stars move around out of their positions and the rain rains and the storm comes and the wind blows and when the word is spoken all that happens and all hell breaks loose and they all turn on each other when there's yes when that hammer hits the anvil I'm talking about a big like sledgehammer when that hits the anvil you gotta have strong hands to that because that would hurt your hands if you hit the anvil and you weren't strong you have to be strong it has no effect on you but when you hit that hammer on that anvil or whatever surface, heaven and earth quakes and shakes and moves when one is, has that confidence. It's not something, well, I need to be more confident. No, well, you never, that's, well, that'll never happen with that attitude. You just have it. You are it. So we haven't been able to take hold of our inheritance. We haven't been able to take hold of our confidence. We haven't been able to take hold of anything outside ourselves. We're just helpless victims is the way that we've seen ourselves and the way that we've, and just trying to get through without getting kicked too many times in the head today, if possible. Thank you. Then there's the witches and all that who are trying to kill you, kill you all because they work for the other side. So they're after your butt, you know? And uh, trying to you know, shame you, berate you, or what the witches do is they try to get you to defeat yourselves. They get an article of clothing, a piece of hair, do whatever, uh, you know, a urine sample, anything to to do spells that get you to doubt yourselves and to disintegrate yourselves, to harm yourselves, become self-destructive. That's ninety-nine percent of witchcraft are spells like that. Oh yeah. They try to get you to destroy yourself so there's no blame. You see, oh wow, he's really destroying himself. Oh look, he really became a pervert or a thief or a uh, whatever. Uh, Foul-mouthed. Oh look, he got really fat. Or whatever other kind of thing that you could... Cool, let's keep those spells going. It's working. Then they have people check you out, you know, and... It's like, yeah, that fat whammy is really working on that, or that skinny unto death whammy is working, or that cancer whammy, that's really doing good today. Yeah, he's got all kinds of cancer. He's, he's really wrecked. You know, whatever. But that's the way they do it. Or they do it to the country. Let's get the people to all become complacent, put a spell over them all, so they all have all their freedom and all their money stolen from them, and they won't care. They just became good little slaves begging for crumbs. Let's put that spell on America, shall we? My name is Witch Valerie Jarrett. I'm a witch. I put the spell on America, along with my whole coven, spilling blood right and left with the ultimate powers of Lucifer seething in our hands. We will take over the entire world for the devil, and we will reign, and if anyone looks at us the wrong way, we'll lay their soul to waste. <laughs> right? Doesn't remind you of like a cartoon movie? Pirates of the Caribbean, whatever. I have news for you. 
that will never happen. The comeuppance has just begun. A terrible day of the Lord upon the earth and on Babylon, but for the children of God, singing, dancing, and most of all, forgiving through forgetting. Because the change in consciousness means all the memories of past hurts and all the grudges are gone that second. Goodbye. Not to be remembered again, i.e. you forgave. How did you forgive? The slate, well, God did it. He just wiped the slate, I don't even know where I am anymore. I don't even know what day it is anymore. Things are happening all around me, I'm just kind of going, you know, I'm, I'm good with that. I hate sitting around thinking about what I did or I didn't do or hurt this person or that person, or especially letting people guilt trip you. Yeah, you should have done this. Yeah, you should have done that. That's just insecure people on power trips. You're going to walk beyond it you, from this day forward. You just put that out of your mind. Guilt tripping, that's the first thing to go after today. Not after, but right now. Heating, whether it's a mother, father, brother, doesn't matter. Coach, teacher, boss. They're always looking for an angle because they get power off making you feel bad. That's really what that's about. All of that stuff, and then you become more of a victim and you start beating yourself up. And then by Jove, it's working. The guilt tripping is working. Look, he's beating himself up. Cool, now I can come in and nurture. I can come in and now I can be nice. I can come in and now I can be nice. I can come in and now, now I'm going to be nice. See? Then I'm going to guilt trip. Then I'm going to come in and be nice and all. Oh, you're really good. You're really wonderful. And then, ah, oh, you should have done this. Ah, oh, you, oh, you need to improve at that. You know, you know there is that, that dichotomy. Which, you know, and we do it to each other. We do it too. All of us do it to one extent or another. But see, all that is not part of this consciousness. Whether you're a perpetrator of it, whether it's been done to you, or you do it to others, we're all kind of guilty of envy, strife, gossip, guilt tripping, controlling others, being controlled, uh, being um, martyrs that want that secretly want to kill everybody to get even, <laughs> you know. There's, there's all of that going on in, the, in this mind game. That is ended today. Don't know what that means? That's what the Lord wants me to tell you. It ends now. The new consciousness, the third way that they covet and they want, Bill Clinton's a big proponent of the third way, which is the, the you know, you know it the way, that's the Luciferian utopia way that they hope to achieve, which they never will, ever. All along before that, they'll run each other through. <laughs> you know that. Yeah. They're still filled with envy and strife, and you know, they're encouraged when they're angry at someone to, take, to punish them. You know? So they're still in that mode, that, that kind of primeval, sort of old, worn-out, cliched mode. They're still eye for an eye, tooth for tooth. When Jesus said that's ended, he was talking about the very thing I'm talking about. He was also talking about the latter rain in the end days. He was also prophesying. This day will come for God's people. And we will finally have some unity with one another rather than just being at odds with one another. And people that are in the world and striving and conniving and whatnot, they're never going to get it. They're always going to think that they have to strive and cheat the other guy and, and, and to the extent that the other guy goes down, I go up. But the other guy's got to go down in relation. There's all this satanic consciousness. This is all, all of it um, is being put aside today. All of it. Thank God. Because I can't go there because that's going backwards. That's war, strife. You know, how come the other guy? And then that leads to war. The other guy's getting away. I'm going to make sure he doesn't. Well, well let's have a war about it. Right? That's how wars start. You know, that other country is doing well, and we've done just as much work, and we're not. We're going to go steal what they've got, you know, take, because it's rightfully ours anyway. And uh, so, war. See? It all leads to war. It all leads to whether, whether it's individual self-destruction, destruction of the other one, your significant other, being mean, being controlling, being whatever. 
In other words, never ever being free, never ever seeing the light, and then going, well, you're free in Christ? Bull. I don't know anyone who's been free as what I'm talking about in Christ. You've been protected, nurtured, brought along, free in the sense of being free of the, of the, of the, um, the legal ramifications, meaning being owned as a slave by the devil and his minions. But that's the freedom. In terms of really being free, you have not been free. And I have not been free. We have been fighting off the feeling of being victims and crying about everything and wishing we weren't left out or whatever it is or hoping God, Jesus comes and puts it right for us. That's prim- that right there, that thought, that's primitive. Anyone who thinks that thought is not free, man, at all. Not free. Not free, not free, not free. Anyone who wants to guilt trip another guy, hey, you better repent. Could you? <laughs> well, I'm, you know, doing every wrong thing there is. I'm telling you to repent. That kind of hypocrisy, there's no room for that. But you can't stop it. I can't stop it. We're all hypocrites. And we've all fallen short of the glory of God. We've all done all these things. Here's the thing. We can't stop it. It has to be stopped. Amen. That's what the latter rain is. It pours out on the children of the living God. It changes them far more than than Pentecost of, of after Jesus. And permanently. Permanently. Imagine this. Permanently. This is... Oh, and yes, weapons, they can shoot at you and nothing will happen. Whatever you eat and they can put things in it, nothing will happen. Yeah, it's kind of like better than being raptured, right? <laughs> well, in a sense, it is the rapture. I mean, but this is the real, this is like an interpretation of a change like the rapture concept, which is some man made concept. But I don't disagree with things like being caught up with Jesus and being changed and being, you know, glorified and walking around on the earth and things like that. God's army, if you will has supernatural capabilities of not being harmed. Remember? 10,000 left, 10,000 the right. So what was that? The day of the Lord, there's plagues, and the stars, and the moon, and the weather events, and earth changes, and yet these people are prospering, and they're walking around at like immune to all... They're like in a different... They're in a bubble. They're in a different reality while they're here. Isn't that interesting? Especially when the world's in strife economically and, 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 and governmentally and freedom-wise, when the world looks like a pretty lousy place to most people, there's this like removal of the lamb into the light from the darkness, from being a victim of this situation to being in control of it in concert with the living God, of course, but as, as one. Wow. Well, come quickly, Lord Jesus, takes on a whole new meaning to me. Come quickly, Lord Jesus, consciousness. I need that right now. I don't want to be a lizard reptile of just thinking about the other guy and us versus them. That's a lizard team. That's the reptile part of the consciousness. We need the, 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 the angelic part. We need the supernova. We need the, the black hole and the, and the Big Bang all at once. <laughs> and while, while, while still in this situation, uh, that could simply be canceled if God decided, eh, sun, moon, and stars, let's have a new paradigm. Bing. Oh, you were in the singularity thinking that that was the permanent physics? Oh, so sorry. Well, gee, you didn't have any land. There's no reason for me to be involved. So, so I guess you never did exist. Bye. Oh, yes. Well, I feel confident now. I feel confident that the, the word is right. I'll need you to check it out. Well, you know what? Why don't you just wait? And if anything changes, then let me know. You know, or I should say when it changes, let me know. One way to see it change is your reaction to 
the horrible events in the world. When that starts to change, you know. I deal with people of the old primitive consciousness all the time. They're always getting so mad at me. They get so mad at me that I won't, I won't play. You know, or I'll, uh, it's, they get so mad at, they get so mad at you. If you, it's like angels. You can't control angels. You know, see, they, they, they. Have you ever prayed for an angel to talk to you? It's just, it's, you know, you can forget about that one, right? They'll, they, they may show up when they damn well feel like it, and not a minute before or after. <laughs> so imagine that. Remember this. You don't need their crumbs. You don't need their air. You don't need their dragon breath and power because it's nothing. It's a spit in the ocean. And I just spit onto the floor as a a symbolic gesture. (laughs) Because I feel like I'm just filled with with energy. I'm just like... (laughs) ah. I feel this thing being lifted off me and I really want it. I really want that. I, I really need that. I mean, something happened to me, something really big, something huge, something I can talk about, but that most people won't comprehend unless it happens to them. And it happens to me. It can happen to you. It's not like the happening over. There's a happening there, too. There's a happening here, too. There are two different dimensions locked up against each other. You know, seemingly in some contest to see who wins. Uh, It's not winning and losing here. And there are no losers here. No losers here. Uh, The more rejection I get, the more happy I become. That used to be my, you know how you say these affirmations? It's really true. I just noticed I became more happy the more the more rejections that I got, the more mean-spirited feedback that I got, the happier I got, the more dedicated I got to creating stuff where, like this, people can slam it if they want, or music, or whatever. You put yourself out there, and they're going to do anything and everything. So now I feel like I'm just going to put the most. It's just going to, it's just going to be, we're going to ramp this whole creative process up into insanity, what they would call insanity, which will be perfectly cohesive to me. There is no sense in being linear for another second. That's the end of that. Boom! Linear thinking, lizardine, uh, 145 progressions that come from reptiles. I'm sorry. I know it feels good, but, you know, there is, I just want to play notes that don't go together, and I want to say a word over that and call that lyrics. I want to communicate. I want to, I want to, I just have these feelings, these feelings in me that are going to come out. I've, the Lord must have put them there. But I'm not conscious of them. In other words, it's, there's an unconsciousness. When you, me, I produce, then you listen. No, there is no listen. I listen and I produce. I produce, I listen. I'm, I'm a fan, I produce, I listen. I'm here, I'm there. I can't really hold on to reality too closely. Oh, did someone win? Is there a few points higher or lower? This is a little better than this. That's a little better than that. I don't need any of that. I don't need anything. I have everything. I have everything. In this word today, from Joel and from Revelation and from Psalm 73, I have, I have it all. Just remember that in your world, you're royalty. In this world, you're a fool. And you haven't been happy. None of you have. I haven't either, really. I haven't been unhappy, but I really haven't been happy, like elated, overjoyed like I am right now. I mean, I haven't been, you know. When I'm happy, I just get really theatrical and crazy. I like it, you know. I want to do something funny. Like I want to put clown makeup on, you know, and sort of something. (laughs) Or go have lunch with a friend or... Go look at the sky or do something, you know. Go, uh, I love to breathe in the smell of the sage. We have Russian purple sage, purple flower sage, all over this property this year because it's been 
a lot of water. I mean, it's just covering the fruit. You go outside, you just get blown back by the scent of fresh sage right in your face. It's so lovely. I just can't even tell you how wonderful that is. And with that, I bid you shalom, shalom. I can't cover it all right here. We did as much as we could. Uh, if you didn't take the communion, go back to that part and take it. No, if you don't take it, it doesn't mean you won't get... No, no one's giving you your powers. It's more like, th that's not it at all. The pouring of, we'll have to have a word. You know what? I realize now I didn't explain that right. We're going to have to have a word about what pouring my spirit on all flesh, actually what that means from a dimensional point of view, from a physics point of view, okay? It's just like you're in this set of physics now and then you're in this other set of physics and you don't know how you got there but you do notice kind of that you're not the same as you were but you can't remember that well how you were so the point is sort of moot okay that's lousy too all right i'll see you next time